It was an election like none other. Famous war hero runs for president and wins by a landslide. After 20 long years, the Republicans have finally taken back the White House. After the election, Eisenhower privately shared his plans for the future. He wanted to share his plans publicly in his inaugural address, but his advisor said no because it would hurt him politically. Everything was going well in the beginning years. Campaign promises made were being kept. And then it was Friday, September 23rd, 1955 when everything changed, and all bets were off. Let's just cut to the chase. Eisenhower had a heart attack. Some people call it the billion dollar heart attack. You know, it didn't help matters that he smoked four packs of cigarettes for most of his life, from the time that he was a cadet up until the time that he was about 59 years of age. That's about 60 cigarettes a day. This heart attack not only had a profound impact on him and affected Americans living in the 1950s, but it affects us today. Just stay with me, I'll show you. It's Friday, September the 23rd, 1955. President Eisenhower is at the Cherry Hills Country Club outside of Denver, Colorado. and He's just shot about 27 holes of golf, wakes up late the next morning with chest pains and they run some tests and find out that in fact he's had a heart attack. They admit him very quickly into the Fitzsimmons Army Medical Hospital there in Colorado. Well, when the news of Eisenhower's heart attack hit the public, that Monday morning, uh, the stock market didn't react well and act, reacted actually in panic. The Dow lost about 6% of its value that day, which is equivalent to about 14 billion dollars. It's the reason why some people call this the billion dollar heart attack. It was the largest single decline in stock market history since the crash of 1929. And you have to understand it was a big deal because heart disease in the 1950s was a big deal. It was the leading cause of death. They say that if you got to the hospital after having heart attack, your mortality rate was anywhere from 30 to 40 percent. So heart disease was a big deal. And so many are questioning, is Eisenhower going to finish making it through his term in office? Is Nixon going to become president? Or do we need to get another candidate to run for president in 1956? That 1955 billion dollar heart attack did two things. Number one, it convinced Eisenhower he needed to run for re-election. Now that seems rather odd and bizarre. I mean, you would think that the heart attack would actually show Ike his frailty, convince him that he didn't need to run for re-election, and, and yet it had quite the opposite effect. Let me explain. So Eisenhower had previously stated to some aides privately that he only intended on serving one term. In fact, he wanted to share that in his inaugural address in 1953. And his aides told him, you can't do that. They told him no, because they feared that it would make him a lame duck president. The Democrats and the Congress would quit working with him two years in. It would tie his hands and he wouldn't be able to get anything done. So they convinced him not to make that news public. And it's probably for good reasons too. There's two reasons why Eisenhower was convinced that he needed to run for reelection. Number one, he got a glimpse of retirement and he didn't like it. After spending seven weeks in the hospital there in Colorado and then and spending several months at his at his Gettysburg farm, he realized how bored he was, and he certainly re realized that he would miss the responsibilities of being president. Secondly, saw that there was no viable Republicans that he believed that could step into the White House and lead the country, including his vice president, Richard Nixon. And so Ike saw no one who could offer the steady leadership like he was offering in the midst of the Cold War, serving in the White House. And so Eisenhower is reported to have told some of his aides, he said, if it hadn't been for that heart attack, I doubt if I would have been a candidate again. So Eisenhower does decide to run for re-election in, in 1956. He runs against Adlai Stevenson, which was a rematch of 1952. And in this election, the, I, the, the whole issue of Ike's health didn't matter to voters. In fact, Eisenhower beat Adlai Stevenson by a greater margin in 1956 than he did in 1952. And stop and think about that, how life and, and history was 
was changed because Eisenhower decided to run for re-election following that heart attack. In 1956, you have him signing into legislation, the legislation that created the interstate highway system. Stop and think about how different our lives would be today had those interstates not been built connecting one part of the country to another. It was Ike's vision to have this done, and he thought it needed to be done for national security reasons. In 1957, the Russians launched Sputnik 1, which started the space race. Imagine any other president serving in office during this, these very turbulent times. Eisenhower worked from 1956 all the way up to 1960, trying to get a nuclear test ban treaty with the Soviets. Then in 1957, Eisenhower made a, an impact on civil rights. He sent federal troops down to Little Rock, Arkansas, to try and, 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 and certainly demonstrate and flex the, the powers of the executive branch uh, forcing desegregation and upholding the law. This is how that re-election really made an impact, not only on their lives, but also on our lives today. The $1955 billion heart attack not only convinced Eisenhower that he needed to run for re-election, but it also compelled the United States Congress to address the issue of presidential succession and presidential disability. What if Eisenhower had been incapacitated and disabled from that heart attack? It, it's scary to think about because the, the United States was in the Cold War at this time. If you look at the headlines of the same papers that were headlining Eisenhower's heart attack, there's also a news story showing that the Soviets have just set off another atomic test. The nuclear era here during the Cold War was very scary for people and very troublesome. About two years after Eisenhower's heart attack in 1957, Eisenhower had a slight stroke while he was at a cabinet meeting. The White House conceded that he had an issue, a slight difficulty when speaking, but they emphasized very clearly that he is reading, his writing, and his reasoning were not affected from this. And it's at this time, after this heart attack, and now after this stroke, Eisenhower had some paperwork drawn up from his Justice Department and gave Richard Nixon a letter which gave him the, he believed, the authority to assume the power of the presidency should Eisenhower somehow be disabled. Now the problem with that was, there was it, was, it had no legal enforcement by law. Uh, there was no mechanism to transfer powers from the president to the vice president while the president was still living. Uh, this had been a problem back in 1919 when Woodrow Wilson had a stroke. Uh, he couldn't give his delegation powers to his vice president, Thomas Marshall. And so Edith Wilson, uh, President Wilson's wife, kept him out of public view for the, the better part of 18 months leading up to the end of his time in office there. And so this is an issue that needs to be addressed now. And members of Congress start working and drafting some legislation and, and their ultimate goal is to get a constitutional amendment passed that very specifically addresses this, is, this issue of presidential disability. And members of Congress, including many Democrats, opposed this, including Lyndon Johnson, who is a Senate majority leader. They said, well, this needs to be studied out further before we jump to conclusions and we, we grant powers like this. And they really were making this uh, political. And it's unfortunate that it takes the assassination of John F. Kennedy in 1963 before members of Congress from both parties finally decide to sit down and address this issue once and for all. And what we have signed in 1967 after it was ratified is a 25th Amendment to the Constitution. And the 25th Amendment says that if a president is unable to discharge the powers and duties of office, those powers and duties shall be discharged by the vice president as acting president.
The billion dollar heart attack helped facilitate a national discussion on this issue of presidential disability. And we have been debating the 25th Amendment here for a number of years now. It started in the Trump administration here more recently. Democrats were claiming that President Trump wasn't mentally fit to serve in office at the time that he came into office. And then in 2019, during the impeachment hearings, there were 350 psychologists and mental health professionals that signed off a petition claiming that Trump's mental health was deteriorating. And, you know, this also uh, is, is very similar to what happened in 1964. There was a magazine article that came out in a, in a magazine called Fact Magazine, and there were a number of psychologists back at the time in 1964 that said that Barry Goldwater was not fit to be president. That whole debate went on nationally here. Goldwater later sued the magazine after he lost that election. And in the end, the magazine ended up going bankrupt and, and had to go out of business. But it's not the first time that mental health professionals tried calling in to question whether or not someone was fit to be president and, and what constitutes disability. After the January 6th Capitol riot in 2021, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi urged Vice President Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment to have Trump removed from office. And Pence just sent a letter back to Nancy Pelosi and, and he refused to do it. He says, I'm not playing politics. We're leaving in a few weeks anyway. And he he just sort of brushed all of that off. But also we've had the 25th Amendment debated while Joe Biden has been president. And, and more recently people have been questioning Biden's behavior and this and whether or not there is, it's a, a reflection of some more serious health issues that are going on. Are there signs of dementia that are going on? Uh, there's his wondering uh, off after he gives speeches like he's lost, his baffled looks, his confused looks at times, his public stumblings uh, over some of his speeches, forgetting names, forgetting titles. And people are wondering, is there a cover-up going on? There's a lack of press conferences uh, and there's these scripted appearances. People are wondering, is there something more serious going on and is there some sort of presidential disability there and only really history will be the judge of that if you like what you watched today and you feel like you've gotten value make sure you hit the like button for us help us get word out about press politics if you haven't subscribed to our press politics family and to our channel do that now